Our first guest tonight is an Oscar-nominated actor you know from movies such as Zombieland. Now you see me in The Social Network. He stars in FX's Fleischman is in Trouble. New episodes stream Thursdays on Hulu. Let's take a look. Can I get Instagram? Everyone has it. No, we've answered this before. No social media until you're 13. Everyone. Hannah, you don't even have a phone. It's not good for kids and anxiety. Your brain is still developing, Dad, all right? Don't talk about it. Excuse me. We've already talked about it, okay? How about my anxiety that everybody is always on it and leaving me out? She has a point. Yeah? You're an animal. Please welcome back to the show our friend Jesse Eisenberg, everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm great. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm wonderful. I am enjoying the show a great deal. I had Thanks not, so I'm ashamed to say, I had not read the novel it's based on, which was a book that everybody spoke very highly of. Had yeah. you read the book before you took on? I, I, I bought the book. You know, I bought the book. I had it on, like, um, I had it on, on the app. I bought a digital copy of the book, you know, as an environmental gesture. Sure, that's and, right. Um, and greatly appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. You're yeah, you're welcome. And, um... <laughs> Yeah, but then I had, uh, before I read it, I heard an interview with the writer, who's now a friend, Taffy Burdessa Rackner, a genius. Um, and I heard an interview uh, with her, and she was talking about her work as a, uh, a journalist for the New York Times Magazine, uh, as a culture reporter writing about celebrities. And once I heard that, I, I decided not to read the book because I thought maybe it's about a celebrity. And I, you know, avoid anything having to do with celebrity culture or the arts, you know, based on just shame and ambivalence about my own. <laughs> A place in it, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so I didn't read it, and I felt good about that decision, you know, because I thought, you know, there's a nobility in my, my, uh, you know, my aversion to anything having to do with myself. And then, um, and then uh, they had sent me the script, and I saw that it wasn't about anybody famous, and I immediately dove into the book, and I, I loved it. Yeah, and, and for those who don't know, it's about um, a divorced father who sort of. Going back into the dating scene, but then his uh, his ex-wife disappears, and he's left with the children. Right. There, one of uh, you know the elements of this is he is introduced uh, by his, uh, you know his younger colleagues introduce him to the dating apps, which he has That's missed. That's right. Yeah. Um, you also in real life missed the dating apps, yes. right? Yes. You met your Thank wife God. a while back. Met my wife a long time ago. I I you know pursued her for like a year and a half before she agreed to date me, so then... Really? You know, yes. So yes. that's a lot harder than an app. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know, I went through, like, you know, the 12 stages of Hercules or whatever it's called, you know, to get her to date me. You know, I, I, it was in New York City, though, so that just means, you know, sending her my jokes and my scripts and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I didn't have to fight a lion or anything like that. But, um... <laughs> But then, you know, to see the ease with which people can date, you know, of course, my first thought, you know, and it was like, I made a huge mistake, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then you go through the thing and you see everybody on the yacht or wherever they are, and then you realize, no, thank God, thank yeah. God. I, thank God for that year and a half of, of misery. I think it's, a, I, I, I missed it as well, I think very uh, mercifully. But again, if you see, uh, you know, younger friends who are on it, you're like, oh my God, it's so easy. But then you realize there's just a deep, empty sadness in their eyes, you know, yes, and that yes, makes me yes. happy. I like stability over happiness any day of the week. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was your wedding vow, right? That's what I said to her. <laughs> that's, which was, that's why I asked her to marry me. I said, would you be stable? And, 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 and with a ceiling on stability and nothing else. And then, um, and she said no. And then I waited for another period of time and then we- That's great, yeah. Yeah, we People always come around to stability. Yeah. There is a flashback, so we see sort of um, oh, yes. uh, your courtship with uh, 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 your ex-wife played wonderfully by Claire Danes. And this is, that's a, that's a wig? That's a wig. Yeah, That's it's a, a really good, believable yeah. wig. Yeah. But you know, the, it was like scripted and decided by like a team of people and FX, you know, network people, people, you know, professional people, that I should look, you know, younger and awkward, um, you know, and um, and and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then. And then they, they made like a $10,000 wig that looked exactly like how I normally look. <laughs> and you know, you get the sense that like, oh, corporate realizes that I, Jesse Eisenberg, in my natural state, I'm awkward and, you know, young looking, yeah. just generally speaking, right. and that I'm not presentable on television unless it's like, you know, qualified that this is the awkward years. <laughs> uh, I have a lot more to ask you. We'll be right back with more from Jesse Eisenberg, everybody. <laughs> 